Wow, what a doozy of a series. Let's talk about it. I'm gonna break down the good, the bad, and the ugly. Are you doing this work to facilitate growth or to become famous? Which is more important, getting or letting go? Welcome back, guys. It's your boy, Zach, about to attack another series review. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Falcon and Winter Soldier. Better yet, Captain America and Winter Soldier. I was so excited to see that at the end of this episode, episode six, this season, or maybe series finale. Who knows um, if we're going to get another season of this, if this was just a limited series to set up something bigger and never be seen again, kind of like WandaVision. But I want to break down episode six and then also the series as a whole. So I'm going to start with how I felt about episode six. The good, the good, let's talk about the good parts. Um, the good parts was, let's start with the action was great. It was a frantic pace throughout the episode, like of a cat and mouse trying to figure out where the flag smashers were and who was with them and who they had to fight against. And then when you add Sharon into the mix, you add John Walker's uh, US agent Captain America to the mix, it made this really frantic, crazy opening where I didn't know what was going to happen for a little while. And that got me excited because I feel like the whole series, it was kind of predictable up to certain points what was going to happen beside John Walker's actions at the end of episode four. I didn't see that coming at all. But other than that, you kind of see the story beats that was going on. So this was felt fresh. It felt new. And then the reveal of the new suit. I'm a big fan of Sam Wilson's Captain America from the comics. I was hoping that they were going to go with something that was similar to the suit and, you know, MC it up like how they usually do. But they ripped it almost exactly straight out of the comic book. It was so over the top, so cheesy. But I loved it so much because he actually felt like a superhero. That's what superheroes feel like. They feel like this otherworldly kind of thing. There were so many great shots, but he felt angelic because of the coloring and his wings. And the, it was really good time to shoot this in the nighttime. The, the white and the blue really reflected really well off on the suit. So I'm really happy. Obviously, this is the suit made for a television show. And hopefully when he shows up in other projects, they'll change just like how Steve Rogers' uh, costumes change. So I'm excited to see the variations that he get. Uh, but other than that, I like Steve's attitude in this episode. I didn't get to review some of the other episodes, but my critique throughout the, the couple episodes, I felt like he was following too much, and I wanted to see him as a leading man. I wanted to see how he leads, because that's what Steve Rogers did. He led. He wasn't the strongest. Um, he wasn't the smartest Avenger, but he led because he was a great leader. You just Sometimes you don't need to be the best to lead. Um, so I felt like we got that here. Bucky receded and was like, okay, you got this. Do your thing. I I got your back. Um, and I really, really liked that about this episode. The new suit, other than the way it looked, it made me feel like he can now kind of come back with superior beatings because that was the issue throughout this, um, you know, all the previous entries and even in the show is like, how is Sam going to be able to compete with aliens, robots, magicians, the big three, as he stated, and he's just a human and he doesn't have the combat experience or training as somebody like Natasha or even Clint Barnes, Hawkeye, but the Wakanda tech, um, it's so great to see the, 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 the black Captain America to get his boost, get his, his upgrade from Africa. It, I think that symbolism is really great. And for them to deck it out in the red, white, and blue and you know make it patriotic was really, really dope. Um, and the flight sequences, I said this before, for the first episode and every time they show him flying, it's just really great. Like we've seen heroes fly th throughout you know comic book movie t and television history, but something about the way they shoot Sam flying just feels different it feels like how it feels when you watch man of steel and you see superman fly for the first time how great that feels even though it's just something simple as flying it's the way he moves like a bird like he actually looks like a man that can move like a bird i think was really really great another thing i liked about this was the the finale felt like a movie whereas some of the episodes in the past did feel like it was a little bit below a movie level this felt cinematic and I was watching it on my phone. I wasn't even watching it in the full quality. I want to watch it again and so I could really get the scope of it on a 4K TV. Uh, it, it, it looked like it was shot by official movie directors and it felt like this was the, the buildup of a, a finale of a two hour, two and a half hour movie, action movie, espionage movie that we were watching. So I really appreciated that, especially 
when Sam was chasing the helicopter and then he did this really cool dodge roll to get on the bridge, cover himself up, and it was just the lighting, the positioning, everything felt heroic, it felt epic. I got really excited to the point where I was watching this show on the train on my way to work and I'm pumping my fist, getting all excited and people looking at me like, okay, weirdo. But um, I definitely, definitely, definitely appreciated the step up in quality for the finale. Just kind of like how in WandaVision, it rose almost to move level in the in the fight scene so that was great and other than what like happened in wandavision where it kind of was just wanda versus um Catherine hans character it, it was just a lot of different moving pieces we got a lot of variety we got a rooftop fight we got the aerial fight we got sharon carter gassing somebody we got so many different things um happening here so it kept my interest it didn't it never got dull um and I really, really, really enjoyed it. One thing that I could say that was a negative for this episode was just the length. I felt like some of the loose ends that were happening in the show didn't get to breathe because it just didn't have the time. It was under an hour, which I thought was weird because the last episode was an hour and it felt, I felt fulfilled. And I think that extra nine or 10 minutes or even maybe 15 minutes could have really helped the show kind of snap up some of them story beats. It didn't have to put a finale because obviously it's not going to be the last if we see these characters, but it just needed a little bit more. And the thing that suffered the most was Bucky's redemption arc. I feel like if they were like, oh crap, you know, Bucky has to go apologize to the old dude. And that scene, I, I would have rather them not show him talking to the old dude because I think it was executed so poorly that I would have rather if he would have just get, gave the book to his therapist and had the name crossover. So you know that he had that conversation with them, but we didn't see it. You kind of just know what that conversation would be like um, because of the execution. Um, and I'm going to just talk about the series as a whole now from, from 1 to 6. Um, the things that I really liked about this show was the leads. I think Sam... Wilson, Captain America slash Falcon, a.k.a. Anthony Mackie, was great throughout the show. I, I did criticize his performance, or not his performance, but the writing of the character in the beginning because I felt like he was too much of a follower. But then when it was revealed why he didn't want to be Captain America, I completely understood and I take it all back. Sometimes you got to let these things breathe and, and lead up so you can see where it's going why these characters act this way and it, i felt like it, it was redeemed in my eyes that way he wasn't just following bucky everywhere he was conflicted um he didn't know w what he wanted to do and he didn't think any of the people that was around him would understand until he met someone like isaiah bradley who was a black captain america which i thought was a great connection uh bucky i thought was great i think sebastian stan performance was really good it was very nuanced especially this the scene in wakanda where ao uh released him from the the brainwashing i thought that was such a powerful scene with him crying and, and, and it was like a, it was like an anguish but a happy cry at the same time the way he looked up at her it, it, it choked me up i almost almost cried i'm not gonna lie it was really really good he did a great job of being like showing that he could lead but also being a support for Sam at the same time. He was like the multi-tool, he was everywhere. They stretched him as much as they could in terms of character work and progression. I just feel like that personal part of him that they were trying to do, they failed on that point by not really having the time to see that redemption part of his story go. All the supporting stuff was great. I think that his, his redeeming arc wasn't fully fleshed out like it was supposed to be. And another lead, he's not in the title of the show, but John Walker, I think, to me, is my favorite character of the show, surprisingly. I know I love Sam and, and Bucky, but he was just such a, such a surprise because the U.S. agent in the comics is just a straight-up asshole, a racist, a white supremacist asshole uh, that becomes Captain America, gets announced because he's just too much and he becomes a U.S. agent. In this, they created someone that was... They, they did what they did with Thanos. What he wanted to do in the comics compared to what he's doing in the movie it sounds silly now comparing to what they did in the movie. And I feel like they did the same thing here with John Walker. A lot of people despise his character, as they should, because he's pompous, he's cocky. But he 
he's also a three-dimensional human being he, you can see that he wants to do the right things he just doesn't have all the tools and experience to do the right things because he's learned everything from war and in war you're the enemy you you have to get rid of you and that's it it's it's black and white in that way but when you're in the real world and you're playing with politics and you're playing with public appeal and everybody can see you it's it's a little bit more gray um, so he was he was a really good gray character here. He was like he treaded the line of being bad and good throughout the show, and he showed kind of like the in between of what Sam was and what Carly was. Um, obviously, I feel like Carly was another main character, but I think the Flag Smash as a whole wasn't fleshed out enough for. So I see it as more of a supporting role. So I feel like Sam, Bucky, and John Walker really were the main characters of the show, and it was their story. Um, I want to talk about the themes. Another thing that I really liked about the show, um, what is it like uh, being a black man in America and also a black man stepping into the shoes of being Captain America, where that symbol was seen as the blonde eyes, bl not blonde eyes, <laughs> blue eyes, blonde hair, white male, straight jaw, clean shaven, um, you know, you're always patriotic. You know, as soon as Steve stepped a little bit out of that, they wanted to get rid of him. Um, and Sam is part of the reason why that's happened. I always feel like if you watch the trajectory of Steve Rogers' character, it was influenced a lot by Sam. Um, even up to the point in Endgame where Steve is doing the therapy for a bunch of people after the blip happens. It's that He got that from Sam who did therapy for vet veterans. And another thing that, another theme was, um, I think that was really strong was the way we treat military people in the world. Some military, not everybody. You know, Sam, Bucky, and John Walker all come from the military and Isaiah Bradley. And they all have different experiences, all some positive, some negative. And, um, you know, and you can see how they're treated different based on their ethnicity you know they didn't want a black captain america they didn't want a black um super soldiers so they tried to get rid of isaiah bradley and his legacy um even though sam should be a respected military military person he doesn't get any severance he doesn't get any money they kind of just like have him out there like okay cool you're a nice little sidekick but Bucky, they pardon, they give him what he needs. John Walker did something atrocious. They, you know, they strip him of his, you know, his his medals and he doesn't have the position anymore. But there's no repercussions of what he did in public, which is a very good commentary about some things that's going on in the world right now where people are in office, different places of office and government and policing are doing things. And, you know, they're getting kind of a slap on the wrist for the most part overall not everybody but overall so i think those are some good themes um another one when it comes to the flag smasher is radicalization i think that was the main takeaway from what happened with carly with creating the flag smashers her intentions were good but the way she was going about it kind of like killmonger in terms of his intentions being good but the way he was going about it was too extreme it's the same thing with carly she's just you can see it. She started off with like, let's just help everybody, and then it was when she saw that it was so much pushback, she just got pushing it further and further and further, and she got that first taste of killing people when she blew those people up in the house, and then she was just like, you know what? I didn't feel that bad. She, you could see that she didn't feel that bad, so she was like, oh, let's keep going, let's keep going. She thought everybody was fodder at a certain point. She was just like, oh, these people here don't mean anything. What I'm trying to do is trying to change the world, and thoughts like that can really push somebody to do great things but also push them to do really bad things in the name of good so i think that was a great theme so and it was it was like sam understood but a lot of people didn't sam understood why she was acting that way because there's a lot of people in america in real life and in this show that feel the way she feels but no they can't take those those steps um another powerful theme is uh, the, the people in power having a lack of empathy um, to the people who are struggling. Um, that's something that's going on, you know, that's been going on in the United States and other countries in real life forever. And I think that it was really pushed here a lot. And that was the main point of the flag smashes. Yeah, it, and it's a complicated situation. The blip caused, well, the snap caused millions of people to disappear. They moved people around throughout the chaos and gave them these homes and there's peace. And then five years later, these people come back. What do you do? 
Do you push these people out of their homes? Or do you let those people say, hey, yeah, you know, you were gone for five years. This is not your home anymore. So it's a complicated situation. And, and, and at the end of this, at the last episode, Sam didn't have all the answers, but he, he was telling the people in power, you need to do better. You represent us. You have to do better. You have to protect the people who don't have the power. If it's just a bunch of people like you who live in like nice homes and have money and are safe and your family's safe and you don't have the voices from these people from these communities, it's not going to work. And that was just a small part of his very, very powerful and moving speech that he did at the end of this episode. It was really great. Um, and also lack of accountability. It's who's accountable for all these actions that happen when someone gets killed. John Walker took all, even though he didn't get all the responsibility, I mean, all the punishment he should have probably gotten because he probably should have went to jail for the actions because he killed somebody that didn't even kill the person that he was trying to revenge. But at the end of the day, who made him? Why are those people getting away scot-free? These are the questions and the themes that this show brought up, which I thought were great. And it was really pushed in these last two to three episodes. Um, let's talk about the bad. Um, lack of consequences in terms of throughout the series, I felt like no one was really in danger. No main character was in danger. And this has been a, a complaint for people who dislike Marvel um studio shows and movies they feel like you know that everybody's gonna be safe everything's gonna go right you know that's why it was such a shock at the end of the infinity war where they failed because we just didn't see that any before and people died and they kept coming back so in the series i never felt like anybody was really that much in danger that other than when uh, john walker killed that dude at the episode and uh, episode four uh, that was just a real big shock. I had a feeling, but it, it's not even, I knew he was, probably was going to kill somebody, but the, the way, the brutality of it was a real big shock. So that was good, but throughout the series, I didn't, especially this last episode, I was like, uh, for the most part, I think everybody will be fine. And for the most part, it was. Um, one of the biggest things was the power broker twist. Oh, my God. It wasn't even really a twist. If you watch the show, you know you knew Sharon Carter. It was just, if it's six episodes and we're getting to the finale and you didn't introduce anybody to be the backer of her or to be a backer of anybody else, I, I felt like we all could have told, seen, yes, it's Sharon Carter. She's the power broker. I think that was not a great twist. It wasn't uh, like how in Captain America went to Soldier. We had that big twist with Hydra being in S.H.I.E.L.D., being throughout the government. That was a shock. We didn't see that coming. This one was like, okay, when, why won't they just reveal this right away? We knew this was going to happen anyway. I felt like another thing was there was some missing story pieces in the show. There was a sense of urgency and um, in the show that was lacking. I felt like everybody was, they had time to go home and and talk to their family and and it was like there was no like push we didn't know why the flag smashers were doing the things like we didn't know if there was a timetable we didn't know about the grc's vote till like the second to last episode i feel like the, it that made the show drag a bit because you're like okay wh what are we doing it felt like it was kind of all over the place okay we ran into each other and then we stopped there's no it was no sense of urgency even though i like the show overall that would have helped. There is, like, with the Flag Smashers, they should have had a, a backer. I felt like Carly, being radicalized, being young, fine to be the leader in the face, but we should have had somebody in the behind that was telling her these things so you could see why she was doing these things. We should have saw why the Flag Smashers were so revered because we didn't get to see that. We didn't see them bringing medicine to people, helping people out of terrible situations. That would have helped make everything understand why they have all these people around them just not her repeating the same lines over and over to her friends we we need to see them talk to the people that they're helping and converting them over i think that would have helped the series overall a lot i think part of the reason why things like sharon carter's plot twist being so predictable um i think john walker's storyline not being fleshed out as it could be Bucky's storyline not being fleshed out as much as could be. Um, Sam, even Sam's storyline with Isaiah Bradley and Elijah Bradley not being as fleshed out as it could be. 
and not getting tied up even with uh the, the i forgot what her name is the lady from seinfeld and veep i'm sorry i forgot her name but her character why she was there who she works for that is because of the lack of runtime in these episodes a lack of episodes i think this shouldn't have been a six episode series it should have been nine i know it would have been nine hours and they say the show is expensive to shoot but it, it hurt it hurt the show it hurt the show a lot for me too it could have went from being perfect masterpiece espionage action comic book show kind of like what winter soldier was so it's really good to great depending on how you feel about the pacing um i think that some of the episodes were poorly paced i think that if they had episodes where they focused more on one thing this is sam's family if we had that in one episode but then that overarching thing like okay this is happening so we need to also still get back to that i think that would have helped but having it where it was just like every plot point was in each episode really like you get to a point like i don't care about sam's family even though i did care it's like i just need to know what is the, what is Bucky doing? What is the flag doing? Where now Zemo's in the mix? What is he doing? It's all you're always wondering. While your your mind was never fully focused, or well, my mind was never fully focused on one plot point, because I'm always wondering what's going on with all these other things. What's going on with Sharon? Is she going to join the fight? Is she a bad guy? Who she's talking to? Um, so I think that it could have been focused, especially since it's a show that didn't have a lot of big reveals. Um, which it seems like that's not going to be a thing in these Marvel shows. I feel like that could have been something that could have been done better. Especially if you're only going to give us six episodes. And even though I thought that the themes of the show were really, really strong, I do think that the execution and the, 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 they jumped really high, but the landing wasn't perfect. Um, like I said before, with the runtime, the pacing did not help the you know what it means to be a black man being captain america what it mean what uh being a black veteran um, person in the military uh, or a person in the military in general and how that when you stop you stop doing it or when you get released from doing it like john walker and how it affects you the ptsd and everything we didn't see any of that stuff um and also john walker's redemption so fast of like it, i feel like it was too easy he just got off and the next thing he was just in he was going running around the streets doing whatever he wanted. I think that's that was poor messaging on that side. I think that the execution on those particular themes weren't great. I think they created good talking points that I want to speak to people about, but the actual execution wasn't great. It felt like they wanted to leave it open because they wanted to make a hard stance, which is creatively is not great all the time. And that's part of where I feel like this show was a lot of setup. Um, it was a lot of setup for other future things. There's uh, rumors of, you know, setting up the Thunderbolts. That's why Zemo's in the Wrath, uh, the Dark Avengers. That's what maybe um, U.S. Agent is setting up. Um, and all, and there's supposed to, like, there's cameos cut, and, uh, and I'm going to give a little bit of caveat all to the negatives. There was a lot of production issues with this show. Um, because of COVID, damn COVID, um, <laughs> just like WandaVision where they had to cut a whole episode. This is why there was a lot of uh, empty warehouse fights or a lot of phone calls because they just couldn't have everybody next to each other because of COVID protocols, honestly. They can't, you, can't, you can't risk it. And you can't have these outside fights because, you know, you, you have to have extras because it's like, why are the streets empty like that? Um, it would have been very poignant. And then it was also there was a storyline that was supposed to have where it would help the flag smash the storyline where there was supposed to be kind of a pandemic going on. They kind of touched on it with the tuberculosis, tuberculosis that killed the mom of that area in one of the episodes, the grandma to everybody. But it was supposed to be this widespread thing. And this is why the flag smash was really pushing. And that would have helped me care more about their mission other than like we need to be we need to do this because i'm tired and that's kind of felt like that was their mission all the time it's like prior to what what's going on right now in the world why are you why are you tired why are you pushing so why are you killing people why are you doing all these things um so i think they they it was a lot of setup for other things and a lot of missing story pieces because of the production issue let's talk about the ugly my boy sam's hands I, I need him to become a better fighter. I, I understand he's a human being and he's fighting against some super beings. So I don't expect him to go hand in hand with the Dora Milaje or even have an easy time with John Walker after he took the serum. But he couldn't beat the Leaper. 
really fast. The bat trop, whatever his name is. That took way too long for me <laughs> in episode six. I couldn't believe it. I was like, he needs to, he needs to train every single day to become a better fighter. Um, he has the flying stuff down. I love everything he did with it. But as Captain America, Steve Rogers progressed in everyone, but even in the first Avenger, he was still a really good fighter. He progressed and got stronger and stuff like that. Even though he has a serum, I need Sam to progress and become a better fighter. Because at this point, I don't even think he can beat Natasha one-on-one -on -one, or even Hawkeye. So I need him to get better when we see him again or them to have better choreography because he was getting knocked down too much. <laughs> um, but overall, um, let's, the, I think the future I think is very bright because of the show. Right after this, a couple hours after the show, they did announce that they're going to be doing Captain America 4, which I'm really excited about. I'm glad that Captain America is not just going to go away because that character is really important for the Avengers and the the universe, the MCU in total, in the comics and I think inside of um, inside of the movies. I think there needs to be a Captain America and having a black Captain America and having a black leader I think will be real powerful and he can he can bring a different voice to uh, and, and, and diverse it up. I think that'll, that's going to be great. Uh, in terms of a rating, I think if you're a big fan of Sam, um, Sam Wilson, Falcon slash Captain America, you a big fan of Bucky, big big fan of uh, Captain America, Winter Soldier, Civil War. This is a continuation of those storylines, and I, this is a must watch for you if you if you like those things. If you're a fan of the change in the comics, must watch. If you're not a big fan of these characters, it's still very watchable. I think it's still a very good show, and I think it'll make you fall in love with those characters. Um, just beware there are pacing issues this to me was supposed to be it's like a six hour movie and they chopped it up into shows so the pacing is kind of weird because certain in a normal show when a big thing like happens like in episode four when um u.s agent did that horrific act it will be an episode of fallout but it in the next episode because they only have six they kind of, it's kind of wrapped up so um there are some issues, but overall, I think for me, it was a must watch. I think for a lot of people, it should be a must watch. But if you're not a fan of these characters, not even a fan of Captain America's legacy, it's very, very watchable. You will, I think everybody can get something out of it. Um, so, well, that was my review of Captain America and, and sorry. Well, yeah, yes. Yeah, at the end of the episode, they said it Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Um, I was really excited to review this. Please let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think about the future of the MCU and these characters? What do you think about Captain America 4 being announced? What, what's going to be about? Do you want a, a season 2 called Captain America and the Winter Soldier? Uh, yeah. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for my next video. And uh, peace.